Hi, everybody. We are very happy to have you all here today to talk a little bit more about Microsoft Cloud Solutions for your nonprofit. So I am Shruti Ramaswamy. I am the Vice President of Strategy and Strategic Relationships here at TechSoup. And I also help manage the Microsoft program. And I've been with TechSoup for six years, and I'm very excited to be able to talk to you about this. I actually use the Microsoft Solutions myself. I've been working on this program for quite a while. And so it's always helpful to me to be able to actually be able to help everybody else make their decisions here. As you all know, we are here for a TechSoup webinar and TechSoup is a global nonprofit and charity ourselves. Our mission is to connect you with the donated discounted products and services that you need to further your own missions. So while today's session will be really focusing on the Microsoft solutions, we have a huge amount of variety of solutions and services that are available to you. We have software, we have hardware, both new and refurbished. We offer courses through our TechSoup courses platform. We have mobile hotspots and we have services, including IT consultations, help desk services, migration services that we do as well. So there's a lot more to TechSoup than what we're just going to be talking about today. And so if there's any questions that you have on those, please feel free to ask us and we'll love to put you in touch with the right resources. We offer all of these great um, solutions and services in partnership with over 400 of our corporate partners and technology partners and foundations around the world. And we are here to support you wherever you are in your technology kind of adoption life cycle or your digital transformation scale. We know that some nonprofits are still using install software on traditional desktops. And some of you are thinking about migrating to a fully cloud-based solution. So wherever you are in that process, we are here to offer you support and help throughout that. What we wanted to talk a little bit about today is specifically the Microsoft Cloud solution, but I always feel like before jumping into licensing, which can be a little bit of a completely different language, it's helpful to have a bearing in what we're talking about. So what is the cloud and what are the cloud solutions and how does that really compare to some of the other traditional products that you may have had? So the distinction particularly that Microsoft makes between their offers are offers that are on-premises offers or perpetual licenses that you might have gotten in the past through either the VLSC or those products that you are downloading onto a physical device versus the cloud solutions that are usually um, subscription-based and you are not necessarily having to install anything on your direct device itself. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between both and why you might want to think about adopting cloud solutions. So on the on-premises side or the installed side, there's a few things that distinguish it. One is that these are licenses that are based off of a specific hardware component. So it's a device-based license. So when you get a new laptop, if you get new kind of hardware that you need, each of those would have to be licensed specifically. The good things about that is that you have a one-time expense and then you can own that license in perpetuity, which is why it's called a perpetual license. You don't necessarily have to have ongoing costs to continue to fund it. But that being said is that there's time limits of how useful those um, licenses are. So typically what we see is about a two to three year cycle and some organizations can extend that longer um, until either your device or you need an upgraded version of the solution. In the past, many of the licenses came with software assurance, which would provide about a two year um, warranty for any upgrades during that time. But whether or not you had it, you might still need a different or new solution. Some of the disadvantages of on-premises solutions is that because it's a one-time expense and you have these kind of needs for upgrading, you're going to have that expense incurred on an ongoing basis, right? So over time, you're still going to need newer software. And I think the biggest thing here is that you're going to be responsible for making sure your systems are patched and secure the way you need to. So there's a lot of cost in the maintenance of on-premises licenses oftentimes, particularly if you have many products or devices that you're managing and maybe you're managing that centrally. So that's where some of your Windows server and user licenses will come into play where you're really trying to manage across a pool of different resources. The other thing with on-premises solutions is that it is locked to a device. So for me, if I am going to work on my laptop, but then I'm you know traveling somewhere and I want to take um, I work with me. I'm, if I'm not traveling with my device, it's not as easy to be collaborative. The other part is obviously that 
if you want to use collaboration functions, you're going to have to use a cloud-based solution or integrate it with the cloud-based solution to be able to do that in real time versus just sharing via e on the flip side, cloud solutions are really uh, meant to be more flexible and meant to be more scalable solutions for organizations. In general, cloud solutions are the same solutions that, you know, are using the same kind of backend power that is helping fuel commercial industries, public sector industries, healthcare industries, all of these different things. So the um, scope of kind of security and ability to store data is really much larger in a cloud solution. The other component that I think is a good differentiator is that it's an account-based license. So it's really a user license. It's not a device-based license. So when you're thinking about cloud licenses, you're thinking about a specific user who needs to access a technology solution. So for me, example, if I have a cloud license, I can use that same license and access it on up to five devices. So I can log in on my phone. I can log in on my desktop. I can still and, and install whatever products or solutions I need, but I can also access anything that I need via a web browser at any time as well. So it's a very mobile solution in the way that I can actually go and flexibly get what I need. The other thing is that it is a subscription. So you're going to pay for the ongoing management and ongoing service for getting the solutions that you want. So as updates are made available, as there are new features, new applications develop, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to upgrade. You don't have to think about security patches. All of that's being done for you. There's not necessarily server maintenance or hardware maintenance, and you are going to be able to be flexible. So you can turn the licenses on when you need them. And if you don't need them or people are leaving, you can decommission them. So you're really paying for what you need when you need it. Some of the disadvantages, though, that you have to think about are that the there are costs that are spread out over time. And so there are, and I'll talk about this, a lot of donated licenses, but if you need any of those discounted licenses, it's an ongoing recurring cost. And sometimes when you have funding challenges or when you have unpredictable funding, that can seem a little hard. And the other area that I would just um, stress here that we know can be a disadvantage is some of the core functionality and some of the core benefits of a cloud solution really do require connectivity. And so if you're in a remote location or if you don't have access to strong internet connectivity, that can be a challenge sometimes. And we'll talk about many of the solutions do offer installed products as well. So you'll still have offline capabilities, but some of the power of the cloud is really based off of that connected environment. So why should cloud solutions matter to you? And I know a lot of you are either, either already on it or are migrating or thinking about it. I talked a little bit about some of these, but I'll go through these in a little bit more detail. But mobility and collaboration, security, data backup and recovery, and reduction of cost are some of the key benefits that we see as to why nonprofits should be moving to cloud solutions or starting to adopt those solutions. In terms of mobility and collaboration, one of the things that I talked about was being able to not have to be reliant on a singular device. So you can be mobile, you can be flexible. One thing that I think was really helpful for TechSoup as a nonprofit ourselves is when the pandemic hit, we really didn't have a huge amount of technology struggle because all of us were already on licensing that allowed us to work remotely, that allowed us to access everything that we needed. We had things set up in a way that everybody could access the data that they needed. And that was really helpful. But overall, that's helpful in general. It's helpful for collaboration. It's helpful for real-time feedback. And it is an opportunity to be able to not have to be reliant on one device. You can also access your data from anywhere. So when you're um, doing a volunteer visit, or if you're actually going to meet constituents or serving at a food bank or a local place that is not your normal place of office, you don't necessarily need to lose access to everything that you have. You can access whatever you need, applications, data, email from wherever you are. And I think the biggest thing from a collaboration perspective, and we'll talk a little bit about this, but you have inherently, particularly in the Microsoft solutions, stuff like Teams, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, where you can all be working on documents at the same time. And that makes planning for board meetings or planning for volunteer events a lot easier if you can all kind of work in the document and see edits in real time. The next area is security. This is a huge one, I think, particularly um, for many of us who are serving vulnerable populations and where we have a real stewardship of the data that we're uh, capturing and 
the information that we're storing on behalf of the people that we're um, actually um, trying to serve. And we also know that in the past year or actually past couple of years, we've seen the nonprofit sector really specifically targeted um, by security hacks and nefarious activity uh, for a few reasons. One, we've seen a bigger prevalence of hacking of smaller businesses where security um, might not be at the forefront of how they're managing their data, but also because of the vulnerability of the data that we have, and particularly organizations that are working in public policy spaces or nonprofits that are working on the edge of things that are protected data. There are things and are people who are always trying to fish and attack those. And so having a secure data system is really important. One thing with the cloud solutions is, like I mentioned, these are the same solutions that are used by government, by, by healthcare. And so the amount of security that is already being enabled on any of these solutions, that is inherent. And all of the experts that Microsoft really has in security are really being looked at all times across their instances. So that just lowers the cost in general of how much you yourself have to manage. Also, security updates are automatically updated into your solution. So you don't have to have somebody whose responsibility is to check all of those every single time and then deploy those patches to your on-premises environment. And in the past couple of years where we've seen many of the vulnerabilities has been through organizations who still host their own servers or are still managing on-premises environments where there are more vulnerabilities to be hacked. Most solutions, most cloud solutions have robust security features that are already built in so that you can access role-based accounts. You can limit what people are able to access, use, or see within their accounts. And there are tools available for you to implement stronger security as well. And then there's always add-on features based off of what you need and the data that you're storing to increase that level of security that you have. But I'll go through this in the licensing, but many of the donated products have pretty robust security features as well. And I say all this not to say that you still don't have to be diligent and manage your own security or that it eliminates the need for that at all, but it certainly does help and I think helps to reduce costs as well. There's also the data backup and recovery. One of the biggest things that we think about, particularly when we're working with organizations who are working in humanitarian crises or who are operating after a natural disaster is the importance of data backup and recovery. Um, for the resiliency of our organizations, you really want to make sure that you're not necessarily reliant on files that are either paper-based or that are linked to a device. Locally, we had floods about two years ago that a local nonprofit lost a lot of their data because it was on their devices and all of their devices were really ruined. So having things that are backed up on the cloud, synced automatically to the cloud, provides you an ability to be able to have that resiliency. So in the event of any type of event or any type of recovery situation, you'll always be able to get that data back. And we always recommend, even if you're not adopting all of the cloud solutions, that having some backups um, are going to be really important for your own resiliency as an organization. And then the biggest thing for us is also the value of some of the cloud solutions. It really can help reduce your technology costs over time. And I will say over time because I think it is a more long-term decision a lot of times. And in, in a world where we're all working on funding that we have right now, that's not always super easy for us to make that um, trade-off. So when you think about it long term, though, you're not going to have to own your own servers. You don't have to run your own databases. All of that can happen on the cloud solution and you can let, you know, Microsoft or Google or whoever you want to on those things do that for you. You'll be able to deploy licenses more easily. You can just add users and deploy the licenses. You can spread out your costs a little bit. Like I mentioned, if you have a swell of volunteers that come up or a swell, swell of um staff that come up in seasonal areas because that's what your nonprofit does, you can get licenses for those couple of months and then remove them. So you don't have to incur those costs afterwards. You could really use it as you need. And I think the biggest thing that I also want to make sure everybody knows is it's a little bit different than some of the on-premises environments in which not everybody has to be on the same license. So you can mix and match. And that is really helpful when you're thinking about costs and how to manage your ongoing costs. So if you have some of your staff that need more secure kind of licensing, that have access to more things, need access to more applications, they can have a higher level license, but then you can have others who have donated licenses or different licenses that are, might be more cost effective and still give them what they need, but don't have all of the features that they do not need. 
And so I think just looking at the licensing, being flexible and figuring out how to evolve and make sure that you're reducing your cost, it can absolutely be achieved by moving to the cloud solutions. And I will also talk about, there are many donated licenses that Microsoft makes available. So there's a really good way for you to get that balance of what you're looking for. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and move a little bit more into the specifics of the Microsoft Cloud offers. And now that we've all kind of been on the same page of what cloud solutions can do for us. The first thing I wanted to mention is what is available today to nonprofits from Microsoft. The first is the on-premises solutions. Again, these are the pay one time, the downloaded, not the cloud solutions. There are two kind of offers that are available. One is a donation offer for Microsoft. And if any of you have seen anything that we've put out in the last couple of months, you'll know that this has significantly changed. So right now, the only fully donated solutions that Microsoft offers in the on-premises world is a Windows operating system. And I will just spend one second here because this is a new offer and I wanna make sure everybody knows this. That is a full Windows operating system. So it's not just an upgrade offer and it's not restricted in the way that the old Get Genuine license was that you can only get it once and you can only request it once or anything like that. Microsoft is now making available a full operating system license, which would allow you to move from home to professional. It will allow you to upgrade if you have an existing professional license, but it is a fantastic offer. It is um, available for up to 50 licenses per organization. And so that is the primary license that Microsoft is making available as a donation in the on-premises world. And then there's a limited set of donation products that are available to organizations who are serving or hosting computer labs with their public access devices. Outside of that, all of Microsoft's donations are really moving to the cloud environment. So Microsoft does not have any longer the same donated on-premises solutions that they did before because all of their strategy is really moving to the cloud as well. There are still discounted licenses available. So in the on-premises world, if you're still looking for those solutions, you can still get um, licenses and those will be about 60 to 75% off commercial pricing. So still available at a significant discount. But I think that also helps justify the kind of cost reduction. At this point, if you take a look at some of the licenses, some of the cloud licenses are definitely going to be cheaper and a more financially sustainable kind of option for you as you move forward as well. On the cloud side, they're both donated and discounted licenses, and I'll go through those a little bit more. Microsoft makes available about two license types available as a full donation in the Microsoft um, 365 kind of umbrella. And then there are other offers that Microsoft also makes available as a donation. That discounted rate of 60 to 75% off is um, the same um, discount rate that's applied to some of the cloud subscriptions. So you'll see a lot of them can be pretty affordable. And then as you go in a higher grade of the licenses, you'll see the higher um, price points as well. So when we say Microsoft Cloud Solutions, there are so many cloud <laughs> solutions that there, we're talking about and that Microsoft is talking about. So it can be a little confusing. Today, we're gonna spend the majority of our time talking about Microsoft 365 and Office 365, which are the productivity suites. But Microsoft does make available Dynamics 365, Azure, Power BI, Windows 10, Enterprise Mobility and Security, and Power Platforms, all as cloud solutions that are available to you. Like I mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the productivity solutions just because that is something that everybody we see the most kind of questions about. But if you have questions on Dynamics 365, which is usually used for CRM, kind of solutions, Power BI, which is used for data visualization, Azure offerings, which is used for infrastructure as a service or platform as a service for hosting or for migrating your server kind of spaces into a virtual environment or any of the other solutions, please do let us know and we're happy to send you more materials on it as well. And if you have questions and we have time to, we'll definitely try to address some of those during the Q&A. But the first thing I'll talk a little bit about is the Microsoft 365 suite. And so this is the main productivity suite that Microsoft makes available to nonprofits. There are two uh, license types here that are available as a donation. The first one is the Microsoft 365 Business Basic License. The Business Basic License is free for up to 300 users. This includes all of the kind of main applications of Office that you would be normally looking for, like Exchange, Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. But the caveat here is this is only cloud services. 
So this cannot be installed on your desktop and it will require you to have connectivity in order to be able to use this. So for organizations who have really stable connected environments who are okay using online and cloud solutions of these things, this is a really great license to use. I would also say for organizations who are really looking at this at cloud solutions to augment collaboration or email, this is a really helpful license there as well. The next license is the Microsoft 365 Business Standard License. This offers the same set of services and online services that Business Basic provides, but it also includes desktop applications. So with this license, you can actually download Excel, OneDrive, Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, Publisher, and Access directly to your desktop. So you can use those desktop applications either online or offline. And when you are online, you can leverage all of the great cloud functionality behind it but you'll get both of those subscribers, both of those functionality. This is important too for some of our heavy Excel users. There is definitely more robust features in the desktop application. If you're using Excel for a lot more of your financial analysis, a lot more of some of the solutions that you're working on or some of the advanced functionality, you're probably gonna want a desktop solution of Excel. And then the last license that I wanted to highlight and the license we basically recommend to all nonprofits is the Microsoft 365 Business Premium Solution. This is available as a donation for the first 10 users for an organization. Every additional license on top of that 10 would be available for $5 a license a month. But this includes and has all of the same features of the business standard desktop applications and cloud solutions, but it also includes advanced security features. So it includes Intune for device-based ma management, Azure Information Protection, Conditional Access, and Windows Virtual Desktop. It also comes with, um, if you have an existing Windows professional license, you can actually use it to upgrade as well. So I think that this is a really helpful license. And because it's free for up to 10 users, I would definitely recommend it just because it's so robust and it has pretty much everything that you would need. I will say a few things. If you need additional licenses, you don't always have to get the business premium. This is where like the mixing and matching really helps. So you might get the first 10 for free and use that for those people in your organization who need some of the higher level security or who are in more admin roles. But then you can augment that with a business standard license or a business basic license so you can manage your costs a little bit more as well. And I see a couple things in chat here, and I just wanted to raise this as well, is that Microsoft makes their donated licenses available for organizations um, for their staff and for their, maybe their unpaid executive board members. So if you are talking about volunteers and volunteer licenses, Microsoft's rules dictate that volunteers need to use the discounted licenses or there are particular volunteer products that are available for them as well. So I can talk about that a little bit more if there are more questions on it, but the donations are restricted to paid staff for Microsoft. A little bit more about business premium is on this slide. I won't go through too much of it because I want to make sure we get to your questions, but there are a lot of robust functionality in here. One thing I'll just note is, as I mentioned, for any of the cloud solutions, you can use it on um, up to five devices or install the applications on up to five devices. You're going to get a pretty significant amount of storage. So you get one terabyte of OneDrive and you also get 50 um, gigabytes of email storage per user per inbox. So there's a lot in there that you're already getting that's baked into the solution. And one thing I'll just mention here too is when you migrate to something like a Microsoft 365 business premium or business standard kind of solution, you are in effect making it so that you do not necessarily have to run a Windows server. You don't have to run Exchange Server. You don't need to do that because that's all encompassed in the Microsoft 365 service itself. You can complete all of your access rules management through the Active Directory that's inherent in the Office 365 and Microsoft 365 suites. You do not necessarily have to run your own independent server. So over time, that can really help in managing some of the costs that you might have. Microsoft also offers Office 365 solutions, and I know that name distinction is not always super clear or helpful, and I, I, there's not much I can offer there other than the fact that Microsoft 365 is the kind of terminology that Microsoft most um, uses at this point. And I think it's really to signal that the solution that you're getting is a lot more than Office. It's not just the Office solutions. You're getting so many other apps and so many other 
collaboration and functionality tools that are in there but they have preserved the name of Office 365 for their enterprise licenses um, and their enterprise licenses. So anything that has like an E in it with the license, and many of you might be on those, are typically meant for organizations with over 300 people. So enterprise suites or en enterprise kind of configuration is really meant for larger, more distributed organizations. And so all of these licenses have very similar functionality that I talked about before. So they have the cloud services and the E1 license. They have the um, cloud services and desktop solutions for E3. And then they have all of the like advanced security features that you might want. And you'll see a lot of them are also included in business premium, but it will be to a higher extent in the E5 licenses. Previously, Microsoft did make some of these Office 365 E1 and E2 licenses available as a donation. If you have those as a donation, you can still keep it as a donation. But for those of you who never got those as a donation, these are only available for new subscriptions as a discount now. So most of the donation offers are really the Microsoft 365 Business Basic and the Business Premium licenses at this point. Those are a very high level of some of the most popular and requested licenses, but there are actually a lot more. There are several different licenses types and they can be confusing and it can be hard to figure out which one is the right one for you. So what we have done is we've actually created a tool. It's called the Microsoft Product Recommendation Tool. It's very blunt in exactly what we're trying to help you with. But we try to make it so it's only two minutes, like you answer a few questions, probably five questions, and then we will help you provide you what we think is the right recommendation of license that would be most useful for your organization. So we'll ask you, are you using it primarily for volunteers or for staff? Do you have connectivity? And based off some of those, as well as like the storage needs that you have, we'll recommend what we think the best license is for you. So if you're on the fence or if you don't know, I would definitely recommend you looking at this. And with that, you'll get a report that shows you a lot more about what's in each of those licenses. So you can learn a little bit more about that as well. And we're hoping this can help provide some resources to you as you're making the decision about what license might be the most relevant to you. We also have this handy dandy PDF that provides you all of the options. So things that we didn't talk about today as well. And you can see what access it actually provides you in terms of productivity suites and some of the other applications and security features that we might not have gone through in detail today. The one thing I also wanted to flag is that for the donation licenses, which Microsoft refers to as grants, there is a utilization requirement. So for any organization that has a donated product, so that includes existing Office 365 E1 or E2 licenses, the new Microsoft 365 Business Basic or Business Premium licenses, for you to be able to keep that as a donation, you are going to need to utilize and use those licenses as a, at a rate of at least 85%. So what that essentially means is for any organization that has these licenses, if you are assigning that license to a user, so let's say I have requested 10 of the business premium licenses and I have a license that I'm going to assign to 10 staff members and I assign it to them. Of that, at least eight people or eight and a half people really have to be using that license on an ongoing basis to be able to qualify and keep that as a donation. Usage is really like high level. So usage means that you are touching one cloud service at least once every 90 days. So it's not super significant. So as soon as you're, as long as you're checking your email or actually using the license, you're probably in completely fine standard. But we want to make sure that you're aware of that because I would recommend if you're an organization who wants to make sure you're getting those licenses, wait until you know that the user is actually going to use the license before you assign it. So if you just have 10 licenses, but you have not assigned it to a user, that doesn't count against your utilization. So as soon as you assign that user, that's when your utilization actually starts. And we've created a few resources here to help you understand what your utilization is, to help you look through and understand how to get reporting on an ongoing basis to manage it. But I would say on a very, just make sure that you're aware that this exists, but for the most part, most organizations are meeting this without even having to try and having to manage it. Microsoft will make you aware if you're not meeting it and give you some time to be able to rectify that. But I did want to make sure that you're aware of that before getting those granted licenses.
And then the biggest thing I, my personal kind of like excitement for Office 365 or Microsoft 365 suites is that there's so much more than you're getting than all of the applications we had just talked about. Obviously, you're going to get Word, PowerPoint, Teams, all of those things, but there are a lot of other amazing applications that you automatically get with your solution that can really help many other things that you're doing. My personal favorites, we use Bookings here. Bookings is basically like a simplifying like way that you can schedule time with people. So if you have a need for a consultation on which cloud license to select, you'll get a bookings link and then you can schedule time with our team to do that. We've deployed and we've seen people use bookings for like vaccine distributions and volunteer signups. There are power apps and power automate, which are actually included in your Office 365 licenses. And the power automate solution is really interesting because it creates like these workflows and you can link things that you're doing but they already have a lot of workflows that already exist based off of what people have done with their things. There's a lot of really neat and cool features in there. So I would always recommend that don't just think about the core apps that you know and use in your standard version. Look at all of the other tools that are available to you because it's possible and probable that you don't have to pay for outside solutions. We use forms now for any surveys or for grant reporting that we're doing. And I don't have to pay for another survey tool because I'm already getting that through my Office 365 subscription. So there's a lot in here. I would definitely take a look at it when you get a chance. I could spend hours talking about this, so I will move on from this. And then obviously, I just there's also add-ons to everything I talked about. There's audio conferencing add-ons. There's threat protection. There's additional storage if you need it. So there's a lot of other solutions that we didn't get a chance to talk about today. But please know that this is not the expansive view of everything. In terms of how to get started, so once you're ready and you want a cloud subscription, the first thing you have to do is get validated for Microsoft nonprofit offers, which means you have to go and create a Microsoft account. They call that your tenant and be validated for charity offers. The person who creates that account uh, typically is going to be default your administrator on the account. So we know a lot of organizations who maybe had an account, but they don't know where or who. Usually it's the person who signed up who is your automatic default. And then once you've done that, you can come to TechSoup and request your cloud subscription. You can add that to your cart. We have a tool called the Cloud Manager that helps you manage all of those cloud licenses. So you can add licenses as you need to, and you can see all of the subscri subscriptions that are available and choose the add-ons that you want. And then you can get into your account and start setting up and assigning licenses as well. And throughout this process, we offer support and help. So if you have questions or if you need help figuring out and the tools, the, the product recommendation tools, you have more questions from that, you can schedule a free consultation with us. We're happy to help you figure out the right cloud solution for you. We offer setup and implementation support as well. So if you need help getting your licenses set up, we're happy to do that for you. We also have training. So if you and your staff or your team or your volunteers help understanding how to use the solutions or the best ways to use the programs. We have a whole suite of courses, I think over 50 courses just on Microsoft solutions. And then we have services that are available if you're really looking to do a, a big lift and shift from your on-premises environment to the cloud environment, if you're looking for email migration, data migration, and we can support on that as well. And then as I mentioned at the beginning, we also have help desk and manage IT services if you need ongoing support as well. I mentioned we will be sending these slides and recording to you. With that, I just want to highlight that there is this at the end um, of the slides. It's just links to the additional resources. It's a link to scheduling the free consultation, our product recommendation tool, our training, some of the blogs and content that we put together to help you make the decision on whether or not migrating to cloud solutions is right for you. And then we also have this Microsoft 365 getting started guide. So once you have your account set up, you can use that to just administer your licenses if you want to do that on your own as well. Okay, so I will stop here. I can talk about this for a very long time, but I don't want to bore everybody here and really get to your questions. So I'm going to stop sharing right now and move on to your questions and hopefully we can get through as many as possible. Okay, so the first question that we have from Dan is, is it possible to upgrade a license after purchase through TechSoup? Say we purchase business premium and then decide we want some of the features in E3. Can we upgrade or is that a new purchase? It's a great question, Dan. So one of the great things about cloud licenses is that you can definitely um, upgrade or add a license and you can remove other licenses. 
So the way you upgrade a license is you start a subscription for E3, and then we just remove the license for your business premium. But everything is managed to that user. So nothing really gets, you know, lost or anything like that. It's just really like you have additional features that are available to you. So if you have your licenses through TechSoup, feel free to reach out to us and we can help you through that. I will also say as an opportunity, like many of you might have licenses directly through Microsoft or licenses through other providers. When you have licenses through Microsoft or providers, we're happy to help um, with all of the content and the recommendations and uh, tools, but we don't have actual visibility into your license and we're not able to get into your account and help in that way. So if you need that help, if you would like TechSoup to really be your partner in those areas, you can move your licenses to TechSoup and we can help manage that on an ongoing basis. But when you have your licenses directly with Microsoft, what we're able to do is a little bit more limited because we don't have visibility into all of your licenses until you move that under text. Okay, the next question is from Janice. Can we install Windows 10 with the new Windows 11 licensing? This is a really good question. I wanted to make sure everybody understood this. So we have a new Windows upgrade that's available and Microsoft, as many of you, has a new Windows 11 suite. The thing with Windows 11 is it does have a little bit more complexity in terms of its hardware requirements. So if you meet the hardware requirements for Windows 11, you can go ahead and upgrade for that for free. If you don't meet the hardware requirements, you can always downgrade to Windows 10 and still get the latest version of Windows 10. So you do have the option of both licenses when you're looking to upgrade or when you're looking to download or um, get a new operating system. Diana asks, we currently use the Microsoft Azure platform. Does Microsoft still offer donations for nonprofits? Yes, Diana, thank you for asking that question. Microsoft makes available a yearly grant of $3,500 towards your Azure consumption. So Azure billing is a little bit different. It's based off of how much of the services you're actually consuming. So that is going to be variable based off of how much you're using and what you're using Azure for. So for some organizations, it's just hosting something, or if it's just like a virtual machine for something, that $3,500 credit for a year might take you and cover all of your expenses. For organizations who have a lot more that they're running, a lot more databases that they're running or things like that in Azure, you might have a little bit more. And after the $3,500, it's a pay as you go, and it's the normal commercial rates. But Microsoft does offer an annual $3,500 like credit, sorry. And you can get that directly through Microsoft on their Microsoft for Nonprofits page. Shannon asks, can the license go with a position or does it go with a person? In other words, treasurer, chair, office. That's a really good question, Shannon. So the license itself is assigned to a user. It's not necessarily assigned to a role, but you can create roles to manage access or to manage the way you're distributing those licenses as like a, as a tool. So you can provide anybody who might be a treasury access or roles that would allow them to see certain features in your SharePoint or access certain products or things like that. But the license itself is based off of the user itself. Philip asked, how do you determine what existing licenses you have? Really good question. <laughs> So there's a few tricks to that, I would say. One is that if you're um, like in a Word solution or if you're on your own device and you might not be sure if you were using Office 365 or an on-premises version, you can always go into the account and there's a way that you can select on your like PowerPoint or Word or anything. You can go to File and Options and you can see exactly what you're running. And it'll give you a little bit more information about what license you're running so that you have a better understanding of what license you have. If you have Office 365, you can also log into office.com and you can go into your settings there and you'll see exactly what licenses you have there. Okay, there's a question from Christelle. Does Azure Active Directory be free for nonprofits or do we need to pay a subscription per user? Active Directory comes inherent with some of the licensing that already uh, we talked about. So in Microsoft 365 solutions. So depending on how you're using it and what you guys are using the licenses for and what level of uh, flexibility you need, you might need to get some additional Azure information protection or um, licenses there. But a lot of the Active Directory components that you might need to manage just your users or your user accounts come inherent with the Microsoft and Office 365 solutions. Ben asked, how do we get these licenses? Is this by saving that work, saying that you work for a nonprofit? 
Oh, really good question. When you go to Microsoft's site for applying for a nonprofit, there's like a get started page and it'll go into a registration process. The information, and we actually have a guide. I'll make sure that is put in here as one of the additional resources on the slides. Um, but basically it'll ask you questions about your um, organization, your mission, your website, your budget. And I think it also asks your EIN number. So you provide us a, a base level of information and then they, we can use that to validate. And then once you're validated as a charity, then you can get access to the charitable licenses that Microsoft makes available. TechSoup, if you've already been a member with us, if you've already been validated for offers in the past for other Microsoft solutions, usually that process can be pretty quick. If you've already been known to us, if you're completely new and you've never had a solution, it can take anywhere from five to seven days. But for the big majority, most of that happens within 24 to 48 hours. Mike asks, we have volunteers. Can the software be installed on their personal computers? We have volunteer operations on the chapters. Our services are free and we teach business and do business support. Mike, that's a great question. And I do think that it's important to understand how Microsoft makes the distinction of their licenses in that way, because it is a little bit confusing, particularly for nonprofits who often have many volunteers throughout. So the way that um, Microsoft does it is their donated licenses. So the business standard and I'm oh, sorry, the business basic and the business premium are really only meant for paid staff and for executive, if you will, unpaid staff. So those organizations who um, have board members that are operating in kind of staff roles. For everywhere else, there are discounted solutions available, but those discounted solutions can be used either by the volunteers or by your staff and doesn't have that same restriction. There's a helpful table that Microsoft has that I'm just gonna share on my screen really quickly so that you can see it. What you'll see here is that there's an entire page on Microsoft's site on eligibility about who can actually use the licenses. So Microsoft distinguishes the licenses based off of paid employees, unpaid executive staff, or volunteers and temporary staff. And so they have here, based off of those types of employees, what they're actually eligible for. So for those discounts, for those uh, donated offers, which they call the grant offers, paid employees and unpaid executive staff may use those. If you have volunteers or if you have um, other kind of staff roles, then they can be using the discounted offers. There are also specific um, licenses that are available for volunteers. And a lot of those are either denoted by the F license, which is typically for like frontline staff or frontline workers, or so it has a little, bit, a little bit limited functionality but it does provide you some of the access that you want. But if you have volunteers who need full access, they can be eligible for any of the discounted licenses. Tammy asks, how do I upgrade to Microsoft 365 for my current Office 365 subscription? Great question. So if you have your licenses directly from Microsoft already, in your admin center, you can add any new subscription. And when you're adding a new subscription, you're gonna wanna look for those subscriptions that specifically say in parentheticals, nonprofit staff. And so you can see the ones that are available as a nonprofit to you that are either donated or discounted. And then you add that license or add that subscription to the user. And once it's added to your user, you can just remove the Office 365 subscription from that user as well so that you don't have multiple subscriptions tied to the same user and that you can reduce hopefully your costs. If you have those licenses through TechSoup, we're happy to help you with that as well. So you can just send us a note um, either through Cloud Manager or, or by email. Kristen asks, our licenses are currently named E2 and E3. How do these licenses compare? Really good question. And I'm just going to pull up my screen one more time to show you that difference. So the E2 license, which I didn't have on the slide before, is really comparable. And it was actually what E1 was called like years ago. So the E2 license has the same functionality as the E1 license. It has your online applications of Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, Word, Excel, Outlook, but it is only the online version. So you cannot download and have desktop applications. E3 licenses offers you the ability to have desktop licenses as well. So you don't necessarily have to be connected and you can use those applications offline. Because of that, you'll also see that you can get Publisher, Azure, and you'll get um, some additional security with Azure Information Protection as well. So that's really the difference between those licenses. Okay. 
Don asks, what's the best way to run Microsoft 365 on a Mac? Great question. Microsoft 365 solutions have been designed to operate on both Windows machines as well as a Mac OS. So you'll see that there are areas where you can use them on a web browser if you're using cloud services, but the desktop applications, you can have um, specific desktop applications for your Mac as well. Users can use either OS and still get the same suite of services and offerings. Obviously, if you have a Mac, you're not going to use the same Windows upgrade rights that are available in Microsoft 365. And there might be a few things that are a little bit more limited. But for the most part, all of the applications and suite of software productivity tools will still be applicable on the operating system. Okay, we have a question from Dan about the utilization policy. We currently have 100 E2 licenses. As we move users to business premium licenses, we're going to fall below the 85% utilization. We want to keep some users on E2, but we'll lose the E2 if we don't need the utilization. Or, uh, But will we use, lose the E2 licenses if we don't meet utilization? Or will the number of E2 be reduced to keep us at 85%? So if you currently have 100 E2 licenses and you want to keep some of the users there, the E2 still has the same utilization requirement. So if 85% of the, those users are not using those E2 licenses, you can still potentially not meet the utilization. So what I would suggest that you do is if you have 100 E2 licenses and they are not actively being used, I would just unassign those licenses from a user until they're ready to use it or need to use it. Um, again, the utilization is just one, using it once every 90 days. So if you have staff that you don't think are going to meet it, then you don't need, you can unassign that license from them. You don't have to have that uh, user assigned. That means you can still keep the licenses and you still have that subscription, but you're just not allocating that license to a user. And when you allocate it, that's when you have cost. That's when you have more of the um, storage and everything that's associated with it. So if somebody's not using it, I would suggest unassigning it from that user. You can always reassign that license back, but this way it preserves your utilization and it allows you to be in compliance with the grant as well as keeping the allocation of licenses that you actually need. I hope that helps. Okay. Leslie asks, is the 365 Carver One users multiple devices for security? Great question, Leslie. The Microsoft 365 solution can be used on, so one user account can be used on and installed on up to five devices. So if you have Intune or if you have other solutions that are available in the Microsoft 365 business solutions, you can add devices and manage the devices there. But inherently, if you're using an Office 365 solution or if you're looking at security in terms of the access level, that will be accessible no matter where or how an organization or a person actually accesses that because they're going to be using it through the cloud services that you're suggesting. If you're looking for specific device-based security, there are solutions like Intune or the Enterprise Mobility and Management Solution, the EMS solution, that will provide you a little bit more robust um, capabilities for management of devices across all of your users. Ruth asked a question, I'm trying to move a security key like YubiKey and I can't seem to enable the security key with 365 Business. I read about Azure um, Active Directory, but can't figure it out. Is there any help on this? So Ruth, and this is a great question. I actually don't know the answer off the top of my head myself, but I would, if you can put your information in the chat, we would be happy to follow up with you and see if we can help provide some resources. And it seemed like somebody else asked those questions as well. So please let us know and we're happy to reach back out to you and, and see if we can help you on that. Okay. We have a question here about libraries and computer labs. So libraries and have gone through an evolution of changes in the nonprofit offers. Prior to this year, really, nonprofits were always able to get on-premises device-based solutions for their public access computers. But if they wanted cloud subscriptions, they had to get those through the education channel or the academic channel for Microsoft. Now, what has happened since January is all of library solutions, so including public access, computers, computer labs, or your staff licensing is all serviced through academic channels. So at this point, if you want uh, any type of licensing as a library, the only way to get it currently right now is through the academic licenses. And TechSoup actually does offer some of those licenses now, and we can help you through that. But we do need to make sure that you're actually eligible and you can be validated as an academic institution by Microsoft first. If somebody can on the chat, maybe Gary can put in the link to our page on libraries 
that'll give you a little bit more information. And I'm happy to add that as a resource to the slides as well. Okay, so we have a few questions. I know we only have a couple more minutes. So I wanna make sure I can get to everybody's. We have a question here about, let's see, we currently use, oh, we already answered that about the donations. And I think we have a few questions, a little bit more on just kind of customer support and services and what's available. One thing I'll just mention again here is that we do have a list of services and solutions that can help you. So if you're an organization that's looking to just migrate email or migrate from GoDaddy to TechSoup or things like that, we have solutions and services that can support through that. So we have an email migration service that can move you from either your existed on-premises environment into the cloud environment. We have email migration if you're on a Google workspace and you want to move to Microsoft or vice versa, however you want to manage that. We can also do data migration. So we work with a, a great partner, Tech Impact, who's also a nonprofit to help support in SharePoint migrations, or if you're looking to create new structures and teams to be able to do that as well. And then we also have support if you're looking for Windows upgrade or for just managed IT as well. So there's a lot of options available to you, and we are definitely um, here to help and support you through that. I know that we went through a lot of material today and we're already at time. So if you have any questions, there are a lot of links in here. Feel free to schedule a free consultation. Reach out to us. 